Hey, everybody. Hey, George. How's it going? I'm sitting in the car at soccer practice. Oh, boy. That sounds like fun. Yeah. I mean, it was quite the ordeal to uh, be let into soccer practice. Yeah, I'm surprised sure. soccer practice is even a thing at the moment. Well, so there's, you get your temperature taken, then you go and you wash your, and, you, and you're given a mask, and you go and wash your hands, and they're all situated about 12 feet apart. There's nine kids on the field. So it's uh, interesting. Hmm. Are they doing like practice and shifts? Like they, they had nine kids one day, nine kids another day? They have nine kids per field. So they have 18 kids, <clears throat> two coaches. And so far, um, in looking at them, they're doing, you know, like foot, you know, drills, but they're not passing the ball to each other. So, yeah, it's like they're each set up with their own little obstacle course and everything. Interesting. Yes. Yeah. Yep. My kid's first time in the car since March 22nd. Wow. Hadn't been in the car at all? Nope. Hadn't left the house. Wow. I had to remind him, this is a car you put your seatbelt on. <laughs> yeah, that's always good. All right. Well, I guess we can wait a couple of minutes, but I was just thinking that we could take this time kind of like Monday evenings just to have kind of a general shop talk kind of um, period of time. So there's like anybody has any questions or anything they want to talk about that they've been doing in their shop or at the makerspace, none of that. It's actually the first day that we kind of have that the soft opening um, with the scheduling system. Um, I have a couple of things I'm working on that I'm, I'm happy to um talk about if people are interested in that but yeah it's up to, to anybody you're welcome to unmute yourself talk about anything um yeah we always wait a couple more minutes we're expecting a few more people so george do you know or is if kevin's on did were people there today? Um, yeah, I think there are a few people there today. Kevin might be around. Yep, he would know. Um, but yeah, I think I saw that on the sign up, uh, a couple of people were reserving time. It looked like James was doing some turning out on the uh, um, the patio. Um, and I think, um, I forget their names, but the couple that's working on that van, converting it into like a... Yeah mobile home kind of like thing, RV, they yep. were there. Um, yeah, everything I've heard, it's been working out pretty well, but I think Kevin probably have more of the inside scoop. I, I usually just bug him and get all my information from him. <laughs> yeah. yeah um, nothing... uh... Go ahead. No, go ahead, Kevin. No, well, there's not, not a whole lot special to report. It was kind of a, a normal day, not very many people. Pretty quiet, except when the planer was running. Yeah. The big planer, the little planer. Just a little one, but we did have somebody try to take about an eighth of an inch off in a single pass with the jointer. Oh. So that was interesting. Oh. Today? <laughs> yep, today. That 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 just. Mm. Oh, that just makes me hurt. And I bet it was nice wood too. It was poplar. Oh, well, okay. That's okay. so bad. But still, poplar's, poplar's not that conducive to the. Mm. I don't think <laughs> anything is conducive to an eighth of an inch cut. Oh, that's pretty aggressive. 
reminds me of the one time that um, I went to, well, actually the last time I went to go join something, um, Henry um, had set it up to create tapers on legs. So like it was set up like really aggressively to take a lot off. And I didn't think to, to check it. So like my first pass, it just like ate my piece up. And I'm like, what the? I'm like, oh man, it was taking a huge chunk. Oh. And that's the, the risk of a community shop though, I guess. The tools aren't exactly how you left them all of the time. Oh, I know when I, when I teach 201, that's one thing we do go over is, is you know, checking for square and checking and checking that because you don't know what the last person did. And, you know, I, and I remind them, you know, it's don't, don't assume, don't assume it's square. Don't assume, you know, it takes two seconds to, yep. you know, look at the, you look at these two things, but yeah. Very true. Yeah, I'm gluing up a huge, um, it's not a big green egg, it's this, it's the Komodo Joe, some guy hired me to build a, ta a table for him, nice. and th the opening alone for the top of the table is 28 inches, and so I'm setting it, that up in the, the, uh, I always, well, I don't always, but he saw it on mine. I route out um, like a quarter inch, 18 by 18 inch uh, piece on the other side to drop in a piece of granite. And um, so, you know, I'm gluing up all the pieces for the top and then I'm gonna bring them in and bring that in and, and run it just do it all in the CNC because it'll be so much easier, but yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's what I'm building right now. And then after that, I go to um, some really cool looking um, Adirondack chairs that are kind of rectangular in the back uh, that the client picked out. Um, they're not traditional at all, but I can, they're my next door neighbors and they're, they're new to town and I, I can definitely, after seeing their space, see why they wanted them. But they want two full size and then two for, they said like size 10 year old kids. And I'm like, your kids are two in two weeks. And they're like, yeah. And I'm like, okay, all right. All right. <laughs> I just make four normal size chairs because kids do grow to be normal size. <laughs> They'll fit in it eventually. No. That makes sense. Cool. <clears throat> well, something I've been working on, um, and kind of I guess it's in the, the description um, of this. So I've been working on some jigs for my home shop. Um, I'm actually currently in the process of making a um, cross cut jig for my table saw. Um, I don't know if any of you have used any of the jigs on. Uh, at the space or anything. Um, I know the cross cut jig, so the sled that you push across the the table saw that runs in the two uh, runners. The ones that we've had for a while are, they're okay, but they're very inaccurate. Um, they're not particularly square. Um, so I'm, I'm trying to make one that's is as square as possible. So I'm running the whole, um, I think it's called the five cut test where you calculate your error and then you get your feeler gauge and nudge the fence a little bit. Um, so I've glued up a few of the parts. It's not too exciting. Um, <clears throat> I have thus far, basically all I have is my stop block kind of parts. This is just three pieces of uh, plywood that I laminated together. I cut a dado out and put in some, some T-track in here and then I actually got a, uh, a stop block so that I can make repeatable cuts. This I ordered online. It's a YouTuber I like to follow, uh, Jonathan Katz Moses. He, he makes some pretty cool stuff and some pretty cool products. Um, <clears throat> so he actually had a really cool stop block that I ordered. Um, so that's going to be part of 
part of it, but the idea is that this is going to be my, my fence. It's going to go on the back of it. I'm going to square it up real nice. Um, and then I'll probably have a removable one for the front so that if I want to like put longer panels of plywood or bigger pieces that I want to cut cross cut, um, I can remove the ones on the front. And the way I'll do that is on my, um, kind of the bed or the, the bottom part of the sled, I'll route to dados with, and insert key track there. And I'll have my front fence of my sled. I think a fence would be what you would call it. Um, have bolts go through it, the slide on there that I can tighten down and take off. Um, I've been looking at a couple different different plans. Uh, there are lots of people who have made all sorts of different jigs and cross cut sleds for their table saws. It just, it never ceases to amaze me how many different versions there are of pretty much the exact same thing. Um, so it's, you kind of have to figure out how you plan on using it. Um, so I'm actually going to, after I do make, make this one, I'm going to make another really simple cross cut sled, but that one's only going to be for 45 degree miters. Um, well, you know what you can do with, I don't know, it's King something. And cause I did the five cut and everything. And <clears> I mean, I, like I bring my, my sled in for the cutting board class. Cause it is mm -hmm. like out, out by point like zero 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 one degree i'm like okay I, I can live with that um but what he had on his and i did it on mine was um on the bottom piece of the sled you actually use two pieces and so it allows you to separate it and then i have a there's a bit so there's a gap so i can take out my zero clearance fence and put in like, like I have a, a quarter, quarter inch and a three eighths inch, whatever dados I've cut, I can use, I can change just this strip of wood and it opens up more space for zero clearance for my dado blades. And um, <clears throat> I really like, because I do a lot of datos, I guess. Um, I really yep. like having that feature and it was so easy to add to it. Um, yeah, but I do have to check. Like I do, have, I do find that they, especially from winter to when it gets warm out, I have to usually re-square it. I, you know, even with the five screws in, the wood moves. Are you using hardwoods or are you using plywoods? Plywoods. Hmm. Yeah, I, I didn't think of that, but it definitely makes sense. Yeah. With all the humidity, and you, you're working out of a garage, right? Right, with no AC. Yeah. Or uh, heat, so. Yeah. That's me as well. Yeah. I think we have heat, it's called the summer, but definitely no AC. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I was really, I was, I was surprised, you know, I was surprised, like, I think last summer was the first summer I had it, and I went to do something, and luckily it, it wasn't anything important, like, it wasn't like I was making a final cut on a cutting board or something horrid like that, where I would have just mm -hmm. cried, you know, and I noticed, that, you know, it didn't look quite right. you know the corner didn't look quite square and i was just really surprised cuz i also in the on, on my my fence in the back i i stacked up like four pieces of 3 quarter inch um plywood and made a, a chunk and i put that over <coughs> where the blade comes out mm -hmm. just because oh for sure you know. yeah, i was planning on doing that and painting it like red or something yeah yeah uh, in the chat i think I, I put a link to the the video that kathy's talking about um it's like king's fine woodworking yeah uh, <clears throat> he makes some really cool stuff and he, he does have plans um which which look pretty cool um some of his other videos are really neat to watch too he makes some really neat stuff 
Um, and then another link I put is uh, the Fisher shop. It's another YouTube woodworker guy that I'm kind of inspired by his his plans and the the sleds that he have has because they're so much like very module and that you can add all sorts of accessories and stuff to them. Um, but I mean, it just kind of shows you can go as simple and as complicated as you want on any of these things. Um, and it, it, some, sometimes you just, you have to make a thing and you have to use it for a while and to know that, oh, maybe I should have made this differently when I go to version 2.0. <laughs> you should, um, when you get ready to do your um, 45 degree, the King video shows you how how to make how to make a perfect 45 degree angled cut with that sled and um just totally based on mathematics and it's like it's super cool and it is dead on accurate so you know to make your 45 degree sled if you were going to use a 45 degree piece of wood he can at the very end he makes it yeah, I, so like that's like for like picture frames, right? Like that kind of forty-five. Yeah, I, I was thinking more for um, uh, like boxes. So like if you ha like to have the the large part of the face down, um, uh, yeah, across that. Oh, okay. <laughs> but yeah, the picture frame ones are are awesome. Yeah, and I'm sure there's probably some math you can figure out how to do that on on a sled. Uh, but I figure I'll just make one for each and have them dialed in. Um, Cause I make a fair amount of stuff uh, with miter 45s, um, boxes and, and simple things like that, that I always reinforce with like slides or dovetail splines and stuff like that. <clears throat> I don't know if anybody else who is with us tonight had any questions or anything they wanted to talk about. Um, they're trying to put together their own kind of home shop or just want to hang out and talk about what tools are cool. I think most tools are cool. I'm not really, I'm not really in the power tool or hand tool camp. I, I don't really use a lot of hand tools, but if I had a use for them, I'd probably learn one of these days. Hey, Clay here. I don't know if I'm, is my video going? Or can uh, you go? Oh, wait, here we go. I can hear, yep. There, there we, we go. go. Yeah, okay. yeah. As a, hey, how are you? As a courtesy, I was uh, muting myself so I could eat my dinner. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, no problem. So, I just scarfed mine down. Came yeah. out here. <laughs> so I, I don't really have anything in particular that I'm working on. Um, lots of stuff uh, I'd like to be, but uh, just, just thought I'd drop in and see what, what everyone's up to and as soon as I heard you talking about jigs on the description, I, that, that's always intrigued me. So, it, unfortunately, I have a uh, just a really lousy quality um, contractor table saw with the the slots for for miters and everything are so shallow. I don't know if it's a function of that contractor saw, but it's. I've thought about making some some jigs, but I'm not sure. How, how accurate they would be um, just based on sh how shallow those grooves are. Yeah. Um, just, I guess it's just, uh, you know, whenever I get around to it, give it a shot and, and see how it comes out. <clears throat> if, you, if you get a really snug fit um, to like size it so that it barely slides back and forth. Yeah. Uh, and then, then come back and wax it like with face uh -huh. wax, like that. Yeah. You, sh you should get a pretty consistent, um, you might have a little bit of play, but it shouldn't be too bad. Okay. Um, <clears throat> at home, I have a, like a DeWalt contractor saw. Yeah. Um, the grooves definitely aren't as deep as like a saw stop. With the okay. Cast. Um, but they, they, they look decent. Um, okay. yeah, half an inch, something like that. Um, oh, half an inch deep? Yeah, half an inch, maybe a little oh, bit. I bet mine are a quarter, maybe. Wow. They're really shallow. Yeah, I think it's an older contractor saw. So, yeah. um, and so, can I ask what uh, what what do you use for the runners? Do you use hardwood or do you use a plastic type so material? I'm probably gonna use hardwood. I have a bunch of hard maple and walnut, cherry kind of scrap around. Yep. Um, 
and I figure it, it, I'll probably make other versions of this um, mm -hmm. kind of the first go, um, and I can wax it pretty well and yeah. get it to, to run in there. Um, they do sell um, like aluminum extrusions. Oh, uh, uh, right. Ones that they have like little set screws. That you right. Around an Allen wrench or an Allen key to look perfect. Um, I've seen pretty good things with the, with those. Yeah, um, yeah. They work pretty well. Um, some people do use plastics, um, like the like the milk carton kind of like plastic. Right, right. HTP. Yeah, you get a giant hunk of that and you cut it to the exact right size. Yeah, you know, yeah. With the hardwood, um, like Kathy was talking about earlier, um, yeah, I would need to check for movement every once in a while. Right, right. That's a, good, uh, that's a good point about the, uh, the, the steel material with the set screw. I actually have a shopsmith at the house and all of their fence type or the uh, miter type things have that set screw so you can adjust it. Nice. Um, yeah, cool. Yeah, I think. Point. A lot of the nice ones do have that. The, shop, the shopsmith, that's like the, it's every tool, right? Yeah, it's the five in one. And I actually, I mean, it's great. It's, it actually is great for what it is. And I have a very teeny shop at the house, but it's the tearing down and setting up for another tool. So I have a, I have a, uh, a sander and a, a jointer and a bandsaw and a jigsaw, but yeah, tearing to, and you can, you know, it can turn into a vertical drill press or it can be a lathe but yeah tearing down and switching over <laughs> it's yeah. not ideal but if you if you have like 50 of a certain thing to make you can just set it up for that and buzz through it so it's pretty good huh <laughs> that's cool yeah i've never actually seen one of those in action i've just i think yeah. i've seen craigslist or heard yeah, yeah i think they're made in georgia i don't know if they i think i imagine they're still have parts available i haven't shopped around but yeah <laughs> My dad gave it to me. He bought it years and years ago. So that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I don't have a ton of tools. Um, you know, it's kind of over the last few months with not being able to go to the space. I've acquired a few things. Oh, a miter saw, uh, you know, cross cut miter saw, um, table saw, hand routers, things like that. Yeah. Uh, building out all sorts of other shop furniture. And so we'll probably build a router table here in a couple of weeks. Um, yeah, I need one of those too. <laughs> it it kind of depends on what the space that you have. So I'm working out of a two car garage and I'm going to take one of the car base and it's basically okay. my shop. Yeah. Um, but I always have that. So I can put everything on wheels and pull out the other car and kind of spread out if I need to. Okay. Which is pretty nice. Yeah, that's not too bad. But yeah, not everybody has that, especially if they live in like a condo or a townhouse uh -huh. <laughs> or something like that. <clears throat> right, right. Cool. <clears throat> so yeah, it's cool. So the space is soft open now. I haven't checked the details, but you can reserve time. Is that how it works? Yeah. So um, if you are, I think it came across the Google group. If you search for ERM, um, okay. you find it. Um, but it also, it's in the Slack uh, general channel. Okay. Um, it's It's basically, I think it's, Kevin's on here. He could correct me, but I think I'm right. Um, I think it's open like 10 to five. Mm -hmm. maybe. Um, and there are three, two hour shifts that you can sign up for, um, for different areas. Um, okay. so the wood shop, it's like one person at a time just because it's so small. And then sure. distance. I mean, if you're working with like, like a sibling, like, like a friend or like a spouse or something, you, you could probably go in together. Okay. Um, and then I think it's maybe like one in the e-shop, um, two in the main area, I think, and then like two out on the pad with like okay. the welding stuff and you can move some stuff out there. And yeah. Kevin put the link for the sign up there. Perfect. It's pretty easy. Perfect. Put your name and in the zone and what you're doing. Okay. And is, is Kevin on site ever uh, to like answer questions and stuff like that? Yep, I'm there the whole time. Oh, perfect. Okay. Uh, but we do also require masks and we have a check-in procedure and all that kind yeah, of stuff sure. too. Okay. Yeah. I'll check that out. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah. So hopefully that works. It's, it's good to see people going back and, and working on stuff. Yeah. Probably won't make it back for a little while. I've been busy with some other stuff, but mm -hmm. it's definitely an option. Looking forward to using the CNC again. I don't have That's one great. of those. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Not yet. Talk okay. about space constraints. 
Yes, I could probably fit one, but it would be most of my space. <laughs> right. I don't know if I could afford one though. Right, right. <laughs> so another thing I'm working on right now, besides jigs, um, is I'm actually um, building a workbench um, for for my space. Mm -hmm. And I know in the woodworking world, there are so many different camps when it comes to work benches. Um, I don't even know the names of all the work benches, but I know it's like the split tops. There's the, I think a Rubio bench. There's the, all the ones with the different types of vices, the hardwood ones that for hand tooling. Some people just put a piece of plywood on top of saw horses. Um, but I've, I've been doing some research on that um, to kind of find something that fits with my style. So I'm more of a hybrid, um, probably more on the, the power side of tools, woodworker. Um, and I want something a little bit more mobile. So I've actually been looking into building uh, what's called a Polk style bench, hmm. um, which is, I forget what his name is. The last name's Polk. Um, I might be able to, to look it up, but he, uh, he designed this bench to work at job sites. He's actually a contractor. Um, and he likes to take this around with him in his, in his vehicle, like his van. Hmm. Um, so it sets up on saw horses. <clears throat> you put peg hole, like it looks like pegboard. You put lots of holes for dogs and stuff on the top. Um, and then the interior of it is actually hollow um, with big openings so that you can put tools in it when you're using them. Um, so if you're working on a project and you know you're going to need, you know, a screwdriver or something before you go and put it back, unless you want to put it back, you can just kind of stuff it in <laughs> underneath and, and keep working at stuff. Um, let me see if I can find a link. To That's it. a good idea. Let's see some Polk. Have you started? I have not. So I am um, here. Let me, uh, I will share. Oh, I see it. I see one spelled P-A-U-L-K. Is that the right one? Let Polk? me share my screen. Yeah, I think I see. <clears throat> yeah, so. It's this here, uh, right. Polk style workbench. It's basically, I mean, you can you can ad, uh, adjust it and do all sorts of different things. It's the original design. It's all half inch kind of construction grade plywood. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not super heavy, uh, but the way you construct it is it, ha it has a certain amount of rigidity to it. Um, and what's his name? I forget. Um, his first name, but he actually sells plans um, for his his particular workbench. Um, so, but one of the really cool things, and this is just, I guess, a SketchUp drawing that somebody did, is mm -hmm. you can make it so that it integrates um, like a router, so you can put like a an area to have a router table in it. Uh, that's brilliant. Um, <clears throat> and you can also, if you have a smaller kind of contractor style saw, you can which is, this is what I'm going to do. You can put your saw on um, some extensions. I think they're using like iron pipe, like black iron pipe there and, and like a special housing um, yeah. that the saw's dropped into. And you can use it as an outfeed table. Um, That's cool. Which is really nice because one of the, the biggest problems with the contractor saws, now that I've been using one for a month or two, that I've noticed is that they're just not as heavy. So it's it's really hard to run like a big piece through when, when you when you're at the space and you're you're running a big piece of plywood or a long piece of hardwood through on the the saw stop it's 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 not going anywhere as hard as you push but if you're trying to push a piece of plywood through on a contractor saw you can actually yeah. knock it over while it's running yeah yeah <laughs> don't tell me how i know that or don't ask me how i know that <laughs> did you read it somewhere yeah exactly <laughs> But yeah, there are lots of lots of really cool. Um, so you can make them more mobile or not. Um, you can literally set it up. My plan is to actually break it into two. Like the top part will be two sections. That when I'm not using it, I'm going to hang it on my wall. Um, oh. and if I use it, I put saw horses down. I put it down on on it, and I. It, chances are, it's probably going to be set up all the time. Um, I just I have this dream of setting up a wood shop where I can park both of my cars in my two car garage. I don't, I don't know that it's ever actually going to happen, but we'll see. That's cool. Yeah. It's, it's fun to dream. 
It is. Yeah. But I haven't yeah, started yet. Yeah, um, yeah. Well, that's the thing. is like just a, 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 doing a thought, doing the due diligence, and arriving on a, uh, on a design, you know. Um, that's cool. I have my workbench is just, uh, again, it's, it's something my dad gave me, and it was, I think, given to him or welded up by a friend. It's a bunch of angle iron. Uh, it's ridiculously heavy duty and heavy, and then it has some hardwood slabs on the top, but it's very uneven. So yeah. uh, I think I think I might I'd consider salvaging the base and just making a new top for it. But but this has me thinking, you know, that could be that could be uh, some cool options to maybe incorporate some of these design elements. Yes. So I saw. So it has that kind of that design on the top with all the dog holes. Mm -hmm. uh, and I saw someone modified it. They took a small section of the top and they didn't do the big dog holes. What they did is they, they put some pegboard on top of it and then circled all those and then drilled through. And then that on the bottom part of that, they actually created a vacuum chamber. Oh, right. So it's a downdraft sanding table. On one oh, that's corner brilliant. Of their, their workbench, which is pretty cool. They that's just had really to cool. up with some caulking and, and plywood yeah. and created a dust port. That's um, genius. Huh. So there's all sorts of things. So some of them integrate uh, miter station. So you can actually, if you put your miter saw on like a piece of plywood, you can just slide it in mm -hmm. to the spot and you can use it. And then you can use the rest of the, the workbench as kind of like, um, right, right. like a fence for it. If it's, if it's, if you do it at the right level, um, yeah. the, uh, the router table ones are cool as well. You just, create an area where you can drop in like a lift plate for a router or have some sort of thing where you can connect um, a router. Um, they really, it could, and I could see why it would have that many things because it's supposed to be, it's for job site kind of stuff. So right. take it out of the van, set it up, do all the trim carpentry work, maybe some door carpentry work, things like that. Yeah. Uh, but that, huh. that doesn't mean it's not going to work for fine woodworking either. I, I definitely think it would. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, it's very uh, adaptable. There are tons of options out there, though. So, like, just really just depends on what kind of woodworking you're wanting to do. Um, so, something like that might not be the best if you want to do a ton of hand tooling. Uh, no, <laughs> I'm a generalist. Yeah. Yeah, it runs the gamut. Cool. So, how, uh, I guess the one thing that you said it's half inch plywood, though, typically. Typically, so I think the reason in the plans is all half inch, um, and, and it's Ron, Ron Polk. Ron Polk actually has a, uh, has a YouTube channel where he goes through making it. Yeah. And I think the reason he does that is because he wants one person to be able to like pick it up and, and move around each piece. That makes sense. If it's something that you knew you weren't going to move a ton um, in your own shop, three quarter, I would imagine would probably be a little bit stronger. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. The, that's the one thing that I love about my uh, bench. Not that I have to often, but y if you need to pound on something, these, I mean, these must be probably two inch thick slabs that are, you know, bolted to this, to this angle iron. It's not yeah. going anywhere. You can wail on that with, you know, a two pound sledge or whatever, and it's, it'll take it. <laughs> yeah. And really old timbers. So <clears throat> nice. Uh, yeah. Okay. I mean, honestly, if you have a nice kind of frame that already works and, and it's pretty square and you know you can get it level, yeah. you can, I mean, you could either um, create your own kind of like butcher block top. You could laminate yeah. a bunch of stuff together. Um, or you could just go to like floor and decor and get like a piece of, piece of butcher block and just put it on there. Yeah, they, yeah. I did think like, about that and like the Ikea table, Ikea butcher blocks. Um, but I actually am intrigued by the idea of the drawers underneath because that's a, that's a huge time saver if you've got a multi-day project and you can just keep the tools at hand that you need. Right. I can so see a, a Polk yeah. style bench is awesome for a home shop. Mm -hmm. but I think it would be terrible for something like the makerspace. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, the tools would just be like, where did they go? Yeah, no <laughs> one's going to put anything away. <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean, it just it would happen, but... <laughs> <laughs> but that's kind of a fun thing to think about like when you're designing a uh, shop in your own home um for yep. pretty much single use or family use or whatever your situation is 
Well, um, you can you can really customize it to work best with whatever your workflow is. Yeah, for sure. When you introduce another 300 people, it gets a little bit more complicated. <laughs> right. Sure can attest to <laughs> he's still <laughs> around. Uh, yeah, I don't have to worry about that. I'm happy. Cool. Yeah, thanks. That's uh, I, I found it. I found the uh, the link. So and you said he has a channel too, a YouTube channel. He does. Yeah, he's a uh, he's an interesting dude. He's very California. <laughs> okay. <laughs> or, or something. But unless his videos looks like he just got back from surfing, <laughs> um, which is pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he he goes through. So he has a couple of different designs. Um, is like his classic design and uh, he's got one that's called like a workstation design that integrates like all the tools. Yeah. Uh, that's the one I was kind of looking at. Ah, um, okay. And, okay. And, I found his channel. Yeah. For me, stuff like this, like I actually probably will buy his plans um, just because I really like that he came up with the idea. I think it's fantastic. Um, mm -hmm. I might not follow them to like the exact letter, letter of the law. Um, but uh, I think there'd be a really good, really good start. Um, and I'm, I'm lazy. I don't want to make my own cut list and, and stuff. So if you already did, I can just Got it. <laughs> Nice. Okay. So what, what was the model you said? You, uh, you were interested in a particular version of his workbench? The, um, let me go to his channel. So he has a couple different kind. Let me let me see if I can find his his website. Okay. Yeah, his website's the Smart Wood Shop. Um, okay. I can put that in the chat so obviously i think he still runs like a trim carpentry or like home improvement business but he does get uh, some, some revenue from this um which he did came, come up with a pretty cool plan um so he's got a couple different ones um is that cross cut he's got all sorts of jig stuff so that, i think the the polk workbench 2 is kind of like his original um but he also has one called the Polk Total Station, okay. um, which this is a link to his his website with it. Um, and basically, it's it integrates like an area for a miter saw, for an off feed table, um, for a router table with a fence set up. Um, all those dog holes, which work really well with, I think a couple of different types of dog clamps, um, yep. uh, like wings that extend for your miter saw. If you're, you're cutting down bigger pieces of, of timber. Um, it just, it's really well thought out. Um, and then how to build the saw horses to hold it all up. Yeah. Um, That's cool. Most of what he does is he cuts out patterns or he cuts out like one piece and he uses that as a template with a flush trim bit on a router and has everything match like that um, oh i got you so it's he doesn't have about the pock workbench the the ron pock workbench mm -hmm. yeah we were That's, just talking about that those are cool they are yeah so i was i was telling everybody that i was i was thinking about making one of those just because of kind of its mobility and it, it works really well with the style of uh of what would working you, that I would do. you see and see the dog hole pattern? I was about to just say that. Yes. And I'm very glad the space is kind of is starting to reopen because that would be tempting to see and see the dog holes for me. Right. Right. Um, certainly go, could. Would you go three quarters or 20 millimeter? Um, I would probably do the smaller because um, I want to be able to move it around. Um, I'm hoping when I'm not using it to be able to kind of hang it up on the wall um, and sections. Um, but if I didn't have to move it, I would definitely go three quarter just because beefier is, is better for a lot of furniture. That's my aesthetic, a belief. <laughs> mm -hmm. Cool. It's a, it, it's cool. Uh, but it's just, it's just one thing that I've kind of come at with, with my research on, 
on workbenches. There are probably hundreds of other designs and solutions out there, depending on what you want to do, including there's some really cool, just like tabletop hardwood workbenches that you can set up for very like hand tooling, like cutting dovetails and, and, and chiseling and, and stuff like that. Um, the one Kevin made is really, is really nice for yeah. tabletop work. Yeah. Just like that, which I think he cut that entirely on the CNC. So that's, that's something that you could do um, pretty easily. I think it's out of three quarter Home Depot plywood. Yep. Yeah. There's all sorts of different things. That's the, that's the cool thing about the hobby. It's there's lots of, lots of different ways to approach it. I'll see if I can find the model for that and I'll send it in the chat. Oh, that'd be awesome. You do that in Fusion? Yeah, uh, and it's roughly parametric, but not really. I didn't design it quite right. We wouldn't have known unless you just told us. Well, as soon as you go to change one of the parameters and you find stuff suddenly doesn't quite line up quite right, you'd know. Oh. That That's what sense. sandpaper is for. <laughs> this is, might be require more sandpaper than you. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with you, Stuart. That's what sandpaper is for. <laughs> and then when glue. did get a bigger hammer? Yeah. <laughs> glue, sandpaper, and a bigger hammer. Yep. <laughs> Words to live by. I actually got a cool template um, at some of, one of the woodworking shows. It's a nine hole by nine hole grid. And it's one inch holes and you use a, a, a router bushing in a three quarter uh, and a one quarter or one half inch bit. I don't I think it was a one quarter inch spiral. And then you lay it out and it'll do the four inch dog hole pattern. Oh, um, wow. It's not nearly as exact as you could do on a CNC. But, yeah. But I actually have a DXF. I think it's a DXF um, from this guy who did what he calls it the multifunction slab. Hmm. And it's a, it's a portable table top, a portable top that is designed with the grid hole pattern. And then what he's done that's really nice is he's got a series of like longer um, channels around the edge for clamping. And it's designed to use for on-site work sitting on sawhorses. Hmm. Where, you know, the park bench is, you know, is really, it's designed to have that, it's almost like a, a super torsion box with yeah. a big, big opening to, so you could have a place to stick tools in while you're working on. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. There are just so many different ones. I've seen some pretty cool ones where you just get like craftsman plastic saw horses or whatever. And I have like a pair of those and you just, yeah, you make a top that slots onto them or just sits there comfortably and yep. Go down with that. This, or you can you can build like the torsion box like the the bulk bench and actually put it on like mm -hmm. a like a frame of two by fours or four by fours or something like that if you want it to actually stand kind of somewhere um i've always liked them as uh for assembly tables mm. right because you can you know particularly when something's low and flat because you can you know if i didn't have clamps that were big enough i could still just use it with wedges you know, put some dogs down and put some wedges down and um, and you could still get stuff <laughs> really pretty tight. Oh yeah. That's definitely one of the advantages of them. Um, and I think a lot of people do integrate dog holes like that into their assembly tables um, that, that I've seen to either use those fancy festool, festool clamps that actually go under in the dog hole or they hack like so there was a cool hack I think that uh Jay Bates he's a YouTuber did um where he just like ground off the pin of like one of the like the Bessie clamps the Irwin quick clamps, clamps. yeah uh and, and just like put a nail through it or something like that <laughs> and I think that's why not it works one of the one of the YouTube metal guys you know like he cut cut it and then re-welded a a shorter version so it's sticking there I actually, um, I, my, my workbench was a, you know, an, a Harbor Freight aftermarket special. 
right? <laughs> so none of the holes were a, a standard size for anything. So I finally drilled them all out to three quarter and um, I do, I want to get some hold fasts. I just like the idea of the way the hold fasts work, but the mm -hmm. bench wasn't thick enough. So I wound up building underneath it. I wound up, you know, thickening it up. So now it's all, I guess about two inches, two and a half inches. So now I want to get some hold fasts because I just think they're kind of cool. Bop, hit them with the hammer and have it be tight. Those are, those are awesome. Yeah. I don't know that I've seen many of those on like a Polk style bench, but definitely on like the, like the more traditional well, the, kind. The, the bench has to be like a minimum, at least for the Gramercy ones, mm -hmm. it says you need to be a minimum of one and three quarter inches thick. Oh, that would be why. Um, because it needs to be at an angle in order for it to lock in, in place. Mm -hmm. And and mine, my, my bench wasn't even three quarters of an inch thick. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, you know, and it was like, I kept saying, well, one, one of these days I'll build a bench and I never, I'm not going to at least not anytime soon. So I just, uh, you know, went ahead and started hacking at it. Um, Chris, Christopher Schwartz made a post, oh, I don't know, about a month ago, hacking on workbenches. And he said, if you have one of these lousy workbenches, you still can make it better. And so he started, you know, showing how he, you know, put a bunch of bolts on it and a lot more wood on it. And so underneath the bench, I just took a bunch of two by sixes, cut them to fit mounted them all in and then drilled the three quarter holes through the original bench and into that. And so now it should be thick enough to use a hold fast, yeah. but it's so much more solid. Cause I probably added about 50 or 60 pounds worth of wood. Yeah. By the time I, I did the underside of the bench, I put plywood all around it, made some shelving on it. And then I put, uh, put old weights in the bottom that I'll sometimes use when I'm clamping something flat, you know, mm -hmm. when you need to, yeah, so I've got a bunch of barbells sitting in the bottom and now you can plane on it and it won't, won't slide around too much. Yeah, no, yeah, that definitely sounds like a nice setup, especially if you're using a big old hand plane. You don't want to, <laughs> don't want it to go <laughs> away from you when you're pushing it. Yeah, I've yeah. got my 80 pound granite surface plate sitting in the bottom of my workbench. There you go. Boy, you'd hurt yourself lifting it up to the top. Yeah, that's a bit of a workout. <laughs> there's um there's this guy i forgot what his name is um he's foreign so his english is accented uh and he works in a very very small shop but what he did was he used a scissor lift like a car scissor lift as a way to raise one of his tools so i want to say it's the planer sits in this compartmentalized um workbench i got to try to remember what his name is um uh, it'll come to me. Uh, and, but he, so he takes the scissor lift to raise it. And um, I got to see if I can find it now. I assume uh, it's Marius Hornberger. No, it's not him, but it's, um, it's, it, it, it's, it's someone like that, but it's a guy he does, he does a lot of resin work as well as woodwork, mm. but he built, he built a bench that you would really like because he made this whole integrated bench. So the miter saw lives on the bottom and it flips over. I got to find this guy. Um, <clears throat> Cause he really does. He really does some interesting stuff. Um, but it's a little scary to have a, like a scissor lift. In your oh, <laughs> yeah. It was really, it was really cool to watch the build. Um, let's see. Shoot. Now I can't remember. I have way too many subscriptions. Sometimes when you watch these, these YouTube videos and, and you see the way that um, these guys hack different tools in their shops, sometimes it's like, yeah, I really want to do that. And other times you're like, how do they still have any fingers? Oh, I was watching one guy and my wife walks in while I'm watching it on TV and she takes a look and she says, that's not really very safe how he's, um, I want to say it was like Sharpie's workshop or something. Mm -hmm. And his, 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 his hand is so close to the blade and his table saw is so bad and hacked up that I'm, I mean, it's, it was scary to watch. It really was, but he did some really cool things, but it was absolutely scary to watch. 
there's what? this one channel that uh, Kevin probably remembers the name, but they have like a robotic arm CNC. Oh, it's Lignum. Lignum, yeah. Like it's awesome. The things they make, like I think they're like a pretty big production shop or, or contracting firm in, in Eastern Europe somewhere. Uh, but they just have this like robotic arm CNC just chilling in the shop, running toolpaths, swinging around. And there's like no cage no railing, no like mark like this is the danger zone. If you come in here, the CNC with a giant half inch bit could cut you in half. <laughs> it's just nuts. It, it, it never ceases to amaze me what people are willing to do. Yeah. It is so making me crazy that I can't find this guy now. Kevin, are those the, your, your dovetails that you're planning down? Yeah, I figured I'd work on it while we were chatting. Did you fill them with some sawdust? Not yet. I'm going to end up rounding the box because it's got kind of a dome yeah. this way. So uh, I'll fill more gaps uh, once it gets closer to final shape. It's looking good. Thanks. I hate it when I can't find what I'm looking for. It will come to you as soon as we all log off, I'm sure. <laughs> That's how it usually Cause, works. Cause, yeah, and, and I see the one that, the, the Kevin, the one you were talking about, the Hornberger one. It's not nearly that complicated. And it, he built it into, it's like this one, he's got this small garage, like a little one car garage that he's built his whole shop in. And so all the parts of the bench flip and spin and twist in order to um in order to make it all work and so i was really impressed with what he did i was n i would not be prepared to do it but it was very <laughs> impressive <laughs> there's a lot of that on youtube it's like oh yeah. that's really cool i wouldn't do that but whatever <laughs> well these guys who make who make their own tools that's the one that i always really uh really makes me crazy yeah oh i so i'm terrible with names but i watch a lot of them too there's that one guy who who makes all like his own band saws and it's like they're mostly out of yeah, wood yeah yeah he bicycle tires uh is that like matthias wendell or yes something? he oh, he is a nut job he is such a nut job <laughs> i don't know i'll say nut job but he's oh unique. he's he is so <laughs> smart about yeah. what he does it. Did you see when he did the testing of the different types of like pocket screws versus box joints and how he would stand on them to and jump on them to see how far it would go before it would break? I think I did see that one. Yeah, it was entertaining. The the one that I the, that I always really enjoy though is um, the guy Mark Rober. I think that's his name. Mm. He's an ex NASA guy who does yeah, these yeah. long form videos that are really interesting, but they had him on an interview on the Discovery Channel yesterday or the day before as part of the launch. Cool. And he showed, he had, he had done a photograph of the Mars rover, he was one of the designers, and he put an Easter egg in the photo of Alf, the alien, in one <laughs> of the rocks, and he finally showed it. <laughs> what? Yeah, it was pretty neat. It was pretty That's neat. hilarious. You'd love to be able to get away with something like that. Yeah, I guess if you, uh, you know, no one's going to check it in space. So. <laughs> well, it was really teeny tiny. If someone hadn't shown, if he hadn't shown you where it was, it would have been very, very difficult to have ever seen it. That's funny. It is making me nuts. I'm just taking the opportunity to finish up a box I'm working on as well. Um, so <laughs> figure it out. So I plan on, on just hosting kind of like a, a weekly Monday night wood shop hangout. So if you're working on something, you want to pop your camera on. If you're questions about something, you, we want to talk to something in particular. I don't know if I really want to have like particular themes or, or subjects unless there's some, some requests. Um, Cause I wouldn't say I'm an expert by any means. Uh, on a lot of stuff, but I can tell you the mistakes I made if that if that will help you. <laughs> well, you're not supposed to tell us the mistakes, right? Isn't that, isn't that what they try to teach us right, right at the beginning is 
you're not supposed to, you know, point out all your mistakes to the people that you are um, giving the work to. Oh, I, I always point out all my mistakes to people I'm teaching. Especially well, te if teaching is one thing, that's for sure. If it's like a, a thing, like a product I made, probably not. <laughs> Where is this? Oh, man. But I think that's a great idea if you're going to do something regularly. I yeah. think that that would um, – but I do think it's useful to come with at least – a topic to get people started. Sure. So maybe we'll put on the like the Slack channel, uh, the woodworking Slack channel. I'll post something out there for some topic ideas, the things that people want to talk about. Um, we can kind of use that as like a list to to work off of. Well, we certainly we certainly can can spend as much time as we like critiquing um, Kevin's dovetails. <laughs> That's true. Hold it up to the camera, Kevin. We're gonna make fun of you. I wish we could. I wish I could do a dovetail like that. I don't. I don't think that's a dovetail. It kind of looks like a ducktail to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a dove. If it's just a rock dove. <laughs> that, that's Those are the ugly. name for a pigeon. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's what they call pigeons in Hawaii. When I lived there, they would always be like, oh, we have all these rock doves. I mean, you mean pigeons, right? <laughs> rock doves. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, I can't really make fun of Kevin's dovetails when I just, the way I make boxes is typically just to miter the corners and then spline them. I use pretty much all power tools. So, so. I so Impressive. I was just experimenting this weekend. You know, there's a, another guy, uh, Stephen Polin, I think is his name. Uh, I think he's a German guy. He doesn't, uh, doesn't have any um, commentary. But he did a very cool, just little tiny accessory boxes. Um, actually, kind of like this. And they're mitered all the way around. Because what he does is he uses a 45, just quarter inch, he uses a 45 degree um, a router bit and then runs them just shy of the final veneer on the router and then just, then they're all bent and glued. Hmm. And it really, it's like brain dead simple. And they, you know, I mean, it takes minutes. And if you do it right, if you change it by the thickness of the material, then it will fit like a, like a, a friction press top. I, of course, didn't get it right. And so it's a little off because I'm not completely square, uh, which is pretty typical. But it's a really cool technique to make like little, um, like I'm, I'm making a bunch of them to store a bunch of nuts and bolts and little hardware that I've got floating around. Nice. And I'm tired of buying one more plastic container. Yeah, I hear you there. I have lots of plastic containers. Lots of plastic containers. And so I was just like, enough of that. I don't need any more plastic containers. I should be able to, to do it myself. Yeah. Yeah, so I've seen some pretty, some pretty cool things. Um, people making mitered boxes with like monster 45 degree chamfer bits where you just set that up on your router table and then you just, that's how you create your perfect 45. Um, one thing that I really want to try, um, and I'll probably do this once I build a router table or maybe I'll do it at the space is, um, so typically when I, um, when I make a mitered box, I like to put splines uh -huh. on it. Uh, so the splines will reinforce that corner. Um, I'll use like the dado stack on the table saw, um, but I'd love to run it, actually run the, like a spline jig with a dovetail bit through it. And oh, that would be cool. Splines. So it's like a, like a, a, a fake way to, to look like you did all the work that, that Kevin did, but with machines, which is, which is pretty cool. That would be very cool, actually. They do sell. They do sell kits. Um, so I think it's Infinity Infinity Router Bits or something. They have a dovetail spline jig 
uh, kit, which includes like a sled for um, taking it to your, your router table. And then also a sled to cut your tapered dovetail splines. Uh, so they're slightly tapered. So you just pop them in until it's friction fit. Put a tiny bit of glue in there. And, and then if you get your flush cut saw, cut it off, it looks like you have some uh, like contrasting dovetails. And the cool thing is like you can, they have a couple of different sets of like sizes of the router bits. So you can do it one. So I could do one like a big uh, walnut spline on dovetail spline on my maple box. And then I could come back with a smaller bit and on the middle, in the middle of putting the walnut one, I could do like, you know, like Jatoba or Purple Heart or like a contrasting color or like another maple. So that looks kind of layered. So it's a really interesting way of adding um, like a, a detail to it that. I, I, I really do like, and I, I think I might've seen it at the space, the way you've got the, or maybe it's just a photo on the Slack, how you've got the splines at opposing angles. I really do think that's a really nice look. Oh yeah. The, this here, this was yeah. one, one thing I was just experimenting with, with it. So I just tilted the, the blade on the dado stack. Um, but yeah, it turned out pretty well. So I have one of these that's finished. I actually just sent it off to, uh, to a friend as a gift. Um, but I have another one here that I'm, I'm working on. I tend to make a lot of stuff and get it like rough sanded. And then I get busy and it sits in a bin for like a long period of time. <laughs> Well, and the, and the other thing, of course, is, and I think this was a conversation Kevin and I were having it not that long ago, is finishing can take as much time as everything else. It can. And it's, it's hard to stay, by the time I get to finishing, I'm really kind of over it. Yeah. And want to move on to something else. Yeah. Yeah, depending on what you're using. So uh, I know that Kevin's recently been going on a kick with shellac. Because um, it's so easy. Because it, well, it, it dries so... It's not so, easy, fast. Yeah, so it's, it dry, once you get it down, it dries really fast, which is nice. Um, depending on what kind of wood I'm using, I like to use water-based products um, just because they tend to, to dry pretty fast, so you can get a couple good coats on there in like an afternoon. Um, the the oil-based ones, so like I have a couple oil-based products like... Um, general finish oil based mm -hmm. poly hit wipe on poly which is beautiful i use it on a desk top that i have because it had all sorts of dark woods and and contrasting colors in it um and it looks great it's just 24 hours in between each coat it's like sitting in your shop stinking the whole garage up you're waiting 24 hours in between you have to sand it down you have to clean it off do it again do it it's just you need like five coats a lot of the time if you're going to a high sheen. It's a whole I week. Re I refinished a dining room table and I decided to use water locks on it. Yep. And the stuff is awesome. It is. But literally, like you said, it was in 24 hours plus on yep. occasion because I was working on it in the wintertime. Mm -hmm. And it would take forever to cure coat to coat. And you and I was wiping it on and not brushing it because I'm not a very good brusher, and so I was very thin coats, and yep. it took forever to get there. Now, now that it's finished, I'm very happy with it and all that goes along with it. But it took a very long time, way longer than I would have liked for it to have taken. But I am happy with it now. Oh, okay. The guy that I was looking for is Casual DIY. Casual DIY. Interesting. That's and, a scary name for someone who does what he does. <laughs> and, he, and, he, and he's got, he also does a lot of stuff with resin, which I think is kind of interesting. And he did a whole series, a whole playlist on resin kind of from start to finish. And I thought that was really helpful because I didn't necessarily understand that there were different sets of ratios based upon whether it was really just a level set or a deep pour oh, yeah. type of resin. Mm -hmm. I haven't started messing with it yet, but I'm, you know, I am curious about it. Because I said, awesome. well, oh, I got epoxy. I can just, you know, and I realized after seeing some of these that five minute epoxy is not the same thing no. as the stuff these folks are doing. Very much not. Yeah, it, there are all sorts of different things. 
Well, I think maybe next time um, we can talk about some stuff like that, like maybe like finishes, um, mm-hmm. our techniques, what we like to use, maybe a little bit stuff about epoxy. I don't, I don't have a ton of experience with epoxy. I've used Total Boat and a couple others in the past. Um, but yeah, I'll send something out to the woodworking channel, um, see what people are interested in, and then we can just kind of like a casual seven to eight talk about stuff, what we're working on, what we want to learn. That would be awesome. Yeah, I think any any time. I mean, it's if we're not doing it, at least it's it's a, not quite as much fun talking about it. But, yeah. You know, since uh, though I you know Kevin was very smart. He's got his stuff set up where he can can be working, and looks like you're set up out in your shop as well. There is that right, George? I am. Yeah, I'm out in my garage. That's my 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 uh, attic access thing back there. Actually, yeah, I think my cat's up there right now. Yeah, I'm, I think uh, I think maybe next time I'll try to do do that. You know, my mine's an outbuilding. I'm not sure what kind of um, internet I get out there. Ooh, my yeah. cell phone works, but I don't know if my wireless goes that far. <laughs> so I just punched a hole in my wall um, to my router, and I have a Cat Seven cable coming through, so I'm good. <laughs> but you might not want to do that if you have a nicer house. <laughs> well, it's um it's also you know 50 feet away. Ah. You know, because uh, I have um, I have at the back of my yard, I've got a small outbuilding, which is really convenient because then I don't have to worry about it ever getting the dust in the um, in the ventilation. Ah, uh, yeah, that is true. What, what, what do you do for dust collection in your garage? Do you have a dust collector or? No, not yet. Um, so my build out is pretty recent. Um, I got a couple things on the list. I think workbench is next um so i have a good outfeed table for my table saw um and then after that probably a dust collection system um either like a cart maybe like mm-hmm. that we have that i have like a big um like a cyclone thing and a big shop back on it um or uh something like uh rockler has a system that they call like dust right uh-huh. that that's like a wall mounted kind of thing um if i could find a good space for that and then kind of run a couple tubes, um, something like that, maybe. I don't want it to be too loud just because uh, like I'm in the neighborhood. And What my and, neighbor in my old house had done, he, you know, he was kind of the guy that got me started on all of the woodworking. Um, when, uh, and when what he had done was his shop was in his basement and then in his backyard behind his basement because the way his land sloped, is basement on one side on the back side of his house had external access. He built a little lean to, and that's where he put his shop back and then piped everything to, um, to that. Yeah, I've seen that. Um, that's a great idea. Uh, I don't really have room for it. I don't think. It was uh, more ambitious than I was prepared than I'm prepared to go to. I'll just wear, I just wear a mask. I don't, yeah, that's what I, so I, yeah, I wear a mask. Uh, I have a pretty good respirator. Um, and then um, I, I, I sweep up everything and I, you know, a lot of the, if I'm just working with like natural wood products, we actually put a lot of the sawdust in our compost pot. Uh-huh. Um, so it's, it, it works out, but eventually, yeah, I do want to have something, especially I'm looking into getting a planer. Um, I want to be able to collect those chips before they strip all the paint off the wall or off my car or something at the point of <laughs> Yeah, that it's um having having a planer is really nice. Yeah, maybe we'll talk about that too. What kind of planers people are using? You, you could you could do we could do shop tours. Yeah, yeah. So let's maybe do that. So you got me thinking about stuff. I'll I'll write something up and and send it out. But thanks everybody for joining. Great yeah. question. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for you hosting, George. Yeah, yeah. Thanks so much. Good to see everybody. Stay healthy. Likewise. Get the space soon. Yeah, for sure. Take care. See y'all around. I think if I end it, the recording will stop, right? Uh, probably. We'll find and out. Does it, does it get saved to your computer or my computer? It gets saved in the cloud. So oh. I end up downloading it from uh, the Zoom cloud thingamajig. Nice. So. All right. Well, I'll see you later. All right. See you.